Racing for world supremacy. Our next generation of Olympians put it all on the line here at the 2011 Whistler Cup. Twenty-five countries, 11 languages, 450 athletes. The top 11 to 14-year-old skiers from around the globe compete, all in the quest for global recognition. The top honour? The coveted Whistler Cup. And Canada is ready to defend its nation's title. More than just results are made here. Whistler Village is truly a united nation. Rightly clad racers shouting and sharing their country pride. Join us for the next half hour to trumpet the victories and defeats. The dreamers and dream makers. And most importantly, the magic behind North America's largest ski race of its kind, the Whistler Cup. Nobody understands big dreams better than Whistler. The 2010 Winter Olympic and Paralympic host mountain knows great vision comes with even greater work. And that's why more than 300 volunteers have come together for the Whistler Cup, now in its 19th year, leaving 450 racers from across the globe to do what they do best, shine, all thanks to this gateway to gold. There was a need in North America's Alpine. The desire to give young ski racers the chance to pit themselves against the best in the world on home snow. Whistler took up this global call. Modeled off the Trofeo Topolino race in Italy, the Whistler Cup was born nearly two decades ago. What began as a grassroots adventure hosting a modest eight nations has more than tripled to an international roundtable of coaches from 25 countries. Something to smile about at this welcome party, a celebration that boasted some familiar Olympic faces. Yeah, I think the Whistler Cup is a really great kind of stepping stone to, to see what uh, the possibilities are out there and to see, to race against kids from Austria, kids from Italy, kids from Croatia, kids from Japan, and to see how big the skiing family is out there. These athletes of tomorrow are determined to take on the world. In 2008, the U.S. held the Whistler Cup high. Canada then captured the top honour, two years running. Will the Canucks do it again, keeping this bright beacon within Canadian borders? It's not all business. Competition and camaraderie go hand in hand at events like the awards dinner. Youth ambassadors welcome guests in 11 different languages. But of course, the universal language here at the Whistler Cup is skiing. Every country wants to be the top ski nation. But the question is, will Canada be able to retain its title? Oh. This year's competition is tighter than ever. Coming up, K2 slalom race results, technical and tactical. Witness the best 13 and 14 year old racers in the world. But first, this weekend's races start off with Super G. K2 racers aged 13 to 14 are aggressively gunning for the fastest time at this speed event, often measured in one one hundredth of a second. Super G is the fastest and most challenging race in this competition. Racers only have one run, one chance to reach for gold. But despite the pressure of this international race, kids are still kids, having fun meeting teams from all over the world. It's excellent. It's one of the most important competitions in the whole world. Maybe the most important. 
It's my first time here and I'm super excited to be here and the course looks really fun. With high spirits, the athletes took to the course. The women stepped up first, with Rani Remy from Canada leading the pack. With a time of 106.14, she set a high target for the other 88 racers and eventually claimed the silver medal. I think it was pretty good. Like I went in with a game plan to ski smooth and ski the line that I inspected, and I feel like I executed it. Um, unfortunately, maybe I didn't push myself as hard as maybe I could have, but um, it's a good result, and I'm happy. But it was Danny Brownell Patti from the USA that stole the show with a time of 105.88. She came ninth in the Whistler Cup last year, but stepped up her game plan to take the gold medal this season. Going out on the start, I was really pumped up, and I just wanted to go for it and have no regrets when I got to the finish line, and that's definitely what I did. I can't wait for GS and then even Slalom, too, so it's going to be really exciting. The men's K2 Super G started in bright sunshine. Team USA and Italy looked strong as the first 10 races hit the hill. In a dramatic turn of events, USA's James LaBelle skiing in 49th place bumped Italy off the podium, taking bronze with a run of 105.30. And teammate Ryan Mooney finished in second place with a strong time of 104.82. It was awesome. It was a really fun course. Uh, awesome snow, great track, good course work. It was a lot of fun. Leaving disappointment far behind him after falling at the Tofino Topolino race in Italy last week, Dean Travers from the Cayman Islands came away with first place. Following in the footsteps of his older brother, who represented the Caribbean island in the 2010 Winter Olympics, he certainly stepped up to the plate. I won with pretty much a perfect run, and I'm really happy. I love it. I mean, it's one of my favorite mountains in the world, and I love coming up here every year and racing here. The K2 Women Super G, Mary Therese Forum, Ronnie Remy, Danny Bravo Patty, Men Super G, K2, James Lovell, Ryan Mooney, Dean Travis. As the first day drew to a close, so too did the sunny skies. Congratulations. Oh, congratulations. Let's hear it for him once again. More competition is coming your way with K2 Slalom, Giant Slalom, and the rising stars who are gunning for gold at North America's only international juvenile ski race. Mark LaRue from the Whistler Mountain Ski Club. Meet one of the voices behind the Whistler Cup. It's the sound of quality family time. I was in a movie, One Miller. When I was about, I think I was five or six. Not confined to the gates, ski racing opens the door to big mountain adventures. Racers are uploading to world-class courses. The 2010 Winter Olympic and Paralympic Games left a legacy of improved runs, as well as critical equipment for fast, safe courses. The challenges are great, especially for our next athlete. Competing in the Whistler Cup is an 11-year-old ski racer named Molly Jepson. I just really love skiing. I've always loved just being on the mountain and everything okay, about it. Three, two, one, cut. Molly is a K-1 competitor who faces a unique challenge when it comes to her skiing. We call it a partial hand amputee, so she's missing uh, her fingers and she has a partial thumb and a little bit of a pinky and a partial palm but she was born that way and and I think because she was born that way she knows nothing different so she just finds her way of doing whatever she does. Which in Molly's case means skiing with one pole and adopting a special technique at the starting gate. I have to push off with my, so I've got my pole on my right hand, I have to push off with both of my hands otherwise it's just for me normal. Come on Molly! Molly's an incredible athlete. I think that she is, she's very, a very nice, very, very sportsman. You know, she's got, she's got a really nice attitude towards sports. In the beginning, when she came in the club, she was very, very, a little bit anxious, you know, and very, and not too outgoing. Now she has made friends. Everybody knows her. Everybody accepts her. Everybody respects her. This determined athlete, who couldn't show us her left hand because she broke it while training for the Whistler Cup has some ambitious goals. Well, I want to try to make it to the Paralympics. A lot of my friends are saying you should just try to stay in able-bodied skiing, but it's going to get harder and harder. 
because first of all, if my star, and if I lose a piece of equipment, because in ski racing, you have to have three pieces of equipment when you cross the finish line. So if I lose something, They're interested in talking to her a little bit more when she's about 14 or 15 years old. And she has skied with them several times already. She has lots of friends that are on the Paralympic team. She was very inspired by the Paralympics when they were here. And she that's her goal, is to be in the 2018 Paralympics. And until then, Molly is just skiing her heart out every chance she gets. I just want people to treat me as a normal person. I'm just one of them and there's no difference. Molly is one of 450 racers from 25 different countries competing at this one-of-a-kind fish sanction event. Racers are the dreamers, and these are the dream makers here at the sponsorship luncheon. Without corporate support and the incredible fleet of volunteers, this three-day celebration would not be a reality. The party continues. Coming up, National Pride marches into Whistler Village. Then what K1 racer led Canada to a 1-2 finish in women's combi? The Whistler Cup is more than just a ski race. New friendships are built, new cultures explored. This race for pride and glory embraces family quality time as well. It's not just kids that are busy on the hill. If you ask 13-year-old Cooper Yates, ski racing is all about staying focused, especially when you've got a full schedule. Well, now I'm really busy because I'm always away skiing for races in like Big White or Jasper. And that requires a huge commitment from the whole family, especially Dad Robert. Matthew Price from Burnham, B.C. Who volunteers as an announcer at many of Cooper and his brother's competitions. We set a real good example as volunteers. They get to, to see us doing a lot of work. And, and today I had my older boy volunteering. My younger boy offered to volunteer and, and, and help out to get this race off. So it was really nice. They're just one example of the hundreds of families devoting their time and energy into making this international event a success. Every position in the organization is a volunteer. Chief of race, gatekeeper, uh, helping put on the events on the, in the village, the parade, the, the banquet. Uh, it is all of vol done by volunteers. Who are mostly comprised of moms and dads, proud parents who love watching their kids and the sport grow. Well, as soon as you become a parent of a skier, it's an automatic <laughs> blessing that you get to be a volunteer. It's a great group of people. There's so many different opportunities to volunteer, from making food to selling clothing. You want to be involved in the hill because you want to see your kids race, so it just makes it more fun to be here and help out. A total of 300 volunteers sacrificed their time to put on the event, and thanks to them, all kids like Cooper had to worry about was to have fun. We're one big vocal family here at the Whistler Cup. Volunteers, coaches and kids are falling into step here at the Parade of Nations as visitors and guests alike line the village stroll, cheering on this roaming United Nations. Truly a global village, harboring friendship, fun and goodwill. The bagpipes began the Whistler Cup Parade, where competitors both local and international walked down the village stroll cheered on by parents and fans. Well, these children are from all over the world and they've already had a really busy day on the hill. So it's really about just being all in one place, getting excited about the race and um, meeting all the different people from all over the world. This year we had 25 countries, which is the most we've ever had, as well as there is more than 325 children. And it's been spectacular. Participants carried flags and banners from their home countries and all seemed to be having a great time. I think it's really cool, like I met an Australian girl who came in third and I thought it was really cool to like hear their different like accents kind of. And it was really cool seeing all the flags in the parade, it looked, I thought it looked really cool. It's going to be really nice just showing my, that my country can ski, it's not just soccer. It's amazing because there's like people from all around the world and you get to compete with like the best. 
and so it's so much fun. I think it's a great experience. Which country has the cutest boys? Oh no, I, I'm not. I know. <laughs> We're having a lot of fun, that's for sure. It's, it's all about having fun. For many, the Whistler Cup is that first step, a confidence-building experience that will help pave the way to World Cup podiums. But not all racers leave their skills on course. Sometimes what they learn in the gates provides a gateway to bigger mountains ahead. Well, Dalton, what are you racing tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Super G? Yeah, Super G. Dalton is named after a beautiful peak, and I was uh, fortunate enough to get the uh, second to ascent in the first ski descent of it. Most people breathe air, but mountains are the Pahoda family's life source. This Pemberton father boasts more than 40 first descents and numerous cameos in Warren Miller ski films and documentaries such as Steep. But what Eric wanted most as a child, he now affords to his own kids. As chief of course, his son, K2 racer Dalton Pihota, is now the one living the dream. Where I grew up, we, we didn't have a racing program. The reason I put my kids in racing, I, I thought it was a really good background and, uh, you know, good structure for them, good training. In my review, I watch you. When not racing, this 14-year-old is following in his dad's ski tracks, roughly 75 days of the year. I've been in a few movies. Uh, I was in a movie, One Miller, when I was about, I think I was five or six for that one. And uh, I've been in Rev just two years ago, and uh, a movie called Steep. Did some heli skiing on Black Elm for that. Some hunting, too. What kind of meat is this, Mom? Uh, pepperoni is elk and moose. Hunting is another passion the two share, along with fixing rally cars and jet boats, as well as sports like surfing. His dad there in the jet boat. I've kind of followed in his footsteps. He's kind of taught me how to do all this. Everything but racing, leaving the next generation of Pihotas to discover the mountains in their own unique way. Dalton skis roughly 75 days a season. He looks forward to fist competition next year, along with free skiing with his dad. Whistler Mountain is throwing every type of weather condition at these racers. Sun, wind, rain, fog. It's just one more thing to think about on the K2 slalom course. Five, four, three, two, one, go. The skies over Whistler looked ominous the second day of racing started on Whistler Mountain. We followed the men gearing up to tackle slalom as the women headed over to the giant slalom course. The slalom course in the upper Dave Murray caught many young athletes by surprise with quite a few disqualifications and uncompleted runs. This didn't slow down Sam Morse who improved on his first run time taking the bronze medal for the USA with a time of 126.22. Slovakia's Lombor Mererik skied solidly after both runs with a time of 125.34, securing him second place. Uh, I feel very good and um, I'm very happy. Second place is uh, for me very good. Go there, Bear! Lambert Quizel from saint Sever, Quebec, was the second fastest in his first run, then fourth in his second attempt. He secured gold by six tenths of a second with a time of 124.67. His success was put down to his consistent skiing style, while other competitors failed to complete the challenging run. I was just, Larry, go for it. It's your last slalom run of the year, so no worries, just go. I'm so excited right now. I'm so proud to be Canadian. It's so special for me. Over on the women's course, Canada were in the top three once again. Kelly Steves stepped up her second run, jumping from fifth place to third, claiming the bronze medal for Team Canada with a time of 152.24. It feels amazing to be third in the world. It's awesome. Up, 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 up. 
The USA also came in strong, with Breezy Johnson just pushing ahead of the Canadian with a time of 152.20, securing her second place. This is my silver medal from today. But it was the Austrians that came out on top, with Marie Therese Spora snatching the first place with an impressive time of 151.33. She had the first, fastest run of the day and a solid second attempt. I can't describe my feelings. <laughs> I'm a good ski racer in North Austria and so I can show what I, I can do. The athletes celebrated with a banquet dinner. The room was filled with laughter and languages from all over the world. With one more day of racing to go, they just needed to keep it together for the last race for the cup. The Whistler Cup is the destination for future racing champions. Don't doubt it. Past Whistler Cup alumni have included USA's Lindsey Vaughn and Slovenia's Tina Mays, as well as hometown Olympians Manuel Osborne Parody, Robbie Dixon and Michael and Britt Janik. This next K1 Team Canada racer also has high hopes to make her country proud. She plays soccer, field hockey and volleyball. But nothing gets Laura Swafield more pumped than this. Like there's more adrenaline to it and it feels better because you're like, I can do this, I'm going to go for it. For this 13-year-old, Whistler Mountain is like her second home. The Vancouver native started skiing at age four. Mom and dad would bring the whole family up here every weekend, fostering Laura's love for the sport. What do you love about it? Everything. <laughs> Like, I don't know, the coaches are so good. I have so many good friends from skiing, and I don't know, it's just so fun. <laughs> but it's not all fun and games up here. Over the past year, Laura's competitive spirits really come alive, placing first at the K1 Western Championships and second at Provincials, which earned her a spot on the Canadian national team. I think she um, focuses, is able to focus quite hard and I think that's important. Uh, she's also a lot taller than some of the other kids, so that helps. Um, but she's had so much fun. It's been, it's been great. Of course, Laura's biggest challenge thus far is Whistler Cup, and with hundreds watching her women's combi run on Friday, the pressure was intense. Thankfully, her training and competitive drive prevailed as Laura took home the gold medal. Laura Swafield. I don't know, I felt really good because I'm from, like, I ski here every weekend. And so, like, I knew more than half of the crowd. And so, like, I don't know, it was just great. The hope yeah. is Laura will move up to the World Cup and the Olympics one day. But for now, she's content just being a kid with a shiny medal to show her friends back home. Every athlete brings their own unique story to the Whistler Cup, and hopefully that tale ends at a podium. Stay tuned, the action continues with the K2 Giant Slalom. The last day of racing carried with it an air of seriousness. The weather matched the stormy tone of the day, and as the snow fell and the wind blew, the men tackled Giant Slalom. All of the top three races pushed themselves to the limit to produce faster second runs. The USA dominated once again, with Colby Lane coming in third with a time of 145.95. It feels pretty amazing. Uh, I, in the beginning of the season, I didn't exactly know if I was even going to be at this race because to qualify from the US is pretty hard. The Austrian racer Marco Ladner just fell short of the top spot but secured a silver medal at 145.11. It feels good, but the distance between me and the first one are only 300, so it's, the luck was not on my side. But it was Ryan Mooney who pushed hardest with the fastest second run and a combined time of 145.08. Mooney helped secure Team USA the leading nation spot in the K2 age category. Thank you, Thank you. <laughs> I've been working so hard. I've 
been uh, dry land training all last summer, all fall, real hard. Um, and finally for all that work to pay off. And this is my goal to win the Whistler Cup this year. And finally it's come true on the last day. It's pretty amazing. Over on the other side of the hill, the women conquered the slalom course. The Austrians had another strong day on course, with Marie Therese Borough once again taking a podium spot, securing a silver medal with a time of 123.16. Her teammate Therese Steinlechner was not far behind, claiming the bronze in a solid run of 125.23. I was very nervous, but I know that I am a good racer in and I'm able to do a good performance, so it was quite easy. But it was all about Canadian racer Ronnie Remy, as she hurtled down her first run with a time of 36.24, followed by a solid second run of 43.02. Overall, her time won her first place, making her Canada's golden girl at the Whistler Cup. The best thing about these races is just getting to meet all the people from around the world that are the same age and have the same goals as you because like you know that you're gonna see them down the road so I just it's so interesting because you always see them every year it's it's fantastic. Canada and the USA trump the final day of racing. Ronnie Ramey and Ryan Mooney bring their countries a step closer to winning the nation's cup. Later on in the show, the grand finale, the presentation of the 2011 Whistler Cup. What country will take home bragging rights? There is no shortage of exceptional athletes here at the Whistler Cup. They may be household names at their own local clubs, but how do they fare internationally? We've got your answer. It's time to award the top ski nation the 2011 Whistler Cup. The final award ceremony began honouring the top standings for Canadian skiers. Whistler Mountain Ski Club's Laura Swafield took the Nancy Green Cup, proudly boasting the top K1 female showing. To no surprise, Ontario's Ronnie Remy was awarded the K2 Nancy Green Cup for the third time in Remy's four years of Whistler Cup competition. Whistler Mountain Ski Club Alex Uriga proudly accepted the Dave Murray Cup after posting the best K-1 male performance. The K-2 Dave Murray Cup was then presented to Quebec's Lambert Quizel. A new award was presented this year, the Lynn Hume Community Service Award, celebrating an athlete's dedication to both ski racing and more importantly, their community. The United States Danielle Burnell Patty accepted the $1,000 check, tooting her volunteerism. Then the K-1 and K-2 Nations trophies were presented. Canada took the top podium for the K-1 division with 145 points. Then it was Team USA enthusiastically claiming the best K-2 results at 212 points. Finally, it was time to present the Whistler Cup to the top ski nation wielding the most combined points of top 15 finishes in K-1 and K-2. And now the overall top nation at 2011 Whistler Cup with 306 points was Canada. retained the Nations Cup, claiming its fourth Nations Cup in five years. Always inspiring. Congratulations to all of the athletes. 450 racers, three days, one cup. And that wraps up Shaw TV's coverage of the 19th annual Whistler Cup. On behalf of our team, Dee, Kendall, Aaron, Jake, Jim, Tim, Milan, and myself, Nicole, thanks for watching, and be sure to look out for our Olympians of tomorrow.